Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. So, you're walking around in Antarctica one winter's day, as if there's any other kind of day in Antarctica, and you stumble upon something like this in the snow. It looks familiar, but the fact that you're standing in the middle of it and the depression is, oh, two feet deep, makes you wonder, were they lying to me when they said it was just wind, ice, rock, snow, seals, and penguins? I mean, I'm no footprint expert, but that kind of looks like a footprint. I'm sure many of you are wondering, how big is this? Well, it's big. Let's go ahead and see. I haven't even measured it yet, but... All right. From the big toe to the heel is 67 feet long. And across about 25 feet. I wonder if that qualifies as an extra wide where you'd have to shop to get your shoes. If your foot was 67 feet long and 25 feet wide with four toes. I mean, that's just me. I probably worry about things more than the average person. But I don't know how you describe this any other way. It is an enormous footprint of something. There is so much stuff I have to show you in today's video, I don't know how I'm going to do it in an organized way, in a way that makes any sense. So I'm just going to show what I found in this region, and it's literally nonstop. There's something here, and it's mostly what looks like some kind of human activity and 
what they're doing, I don't have any idea, but I want to show you something specific here. There's a shadow, initially, that I saw right here that looked very much like a human being with a backpack, maybe a sled behind. But then something else caught my eye. Now, that is an arrow. I mean, I know I've been staring at Antarctica a long time. You know, you get snow blindness and you see things sometimes that aren't there. But I think that was what is described as an arrow. What is it pointing to? I don't know, but... There's stuff going down going down here that is just, uh, it's beyond anyone, even the most skeptical naysayer to go, yep, that's just wind, ice, rock, and snow. That's what it looks like. Just go look outside and you see, of course, what look like people in reclined positions behind large ballistic weapons. That's exactly what appears in the imagery. There's another area, not far away here, that defies explanation. It really does. And I'm not sure how you could look at this and see anything other than what you're seeing. Now, there's two schools of thought on this. Of course, you have the giant square head, you have the eye, you have the arm, something up toward the mouth, the body. But you can also look at this and say, well, okay, well, look, that's like a valley, and there's something in the valley to make it appear this way. Okay, that's one way to create art for sure. And if that's the case, who made it? This is not natural. This just doesn't appear like this. In reality, it just, and so many bird images, I mean, everywhere. And this looks just like a raven. I mean, you can almost even see the beak and the eye as if it was facing to the right, turning its head back over its right shoulder with something on top of it or somebody on top of it. Seriously, there's even purple in the feathers. And as always, I will give you the year. I will give you the locations. You can download Google Earth Pro onto your own device and look at this stuff up close. It is just beyond anything you could ever imagine. Now here's... A completely different region. One of the best, by the way. If you want to start looking at Antarctica and you haven't yet, I would recommend this site. It's a volcano. I believe this is Erebus. And the beautiful part about this is it's all high-res imagery, and there are multiple, multiple layers of it. Now, right here on the edge of the crater, I have said before, and I'll say it again, and history proves me right on this. Ancient civilizations, if they leave one thing behind, for sure that we can identify them. It's art. It's sculptures. It's painting. It's music. I mean, there's, there's still a song out there that you can download on uh, iTunes that was written by King Henry VIII. It's called Pastime with Good Company. And it's actually kind of a catchy, catchy tune. A group called Blackmore's Night recorded it in kind of a modern version of it really great stuff but once again looking right here you have a person seated on a throne and I don't believe it's an actual person sitting on an actual throne right there it's a sculpture a giant one I really honestly believe this is why we're seeing the redaction because art is meant to be seen it's meant to be interpreted like that giant face that third phase of moon had revealed, or at least that's how I found out about it. Art. People with the ability to make you see things from a distance and in a different way that you that you'd seen before.
And some of this stuff is not available in every layer. Here's another one. Legs, body, person seated, head of a bird. Remember the reference to joust? The people riding birds? And the connection to Antarctica? It's just, you can't, you can't sit there and say that this is just, you know, the, the camera screwing up. I'm putting together right now for the end of the year the top 100 finds. And honestly, as I build this video up and look at this stuff, you would have to have the worst camera on the face of the planet on these satellites to create this, or the best, depending on however you want to look at it. Now, let me get the right year here. Hold on. Okay, this is one of the clearest shadows of a human being that I have ever seen. This is in no way enhanced. You have the left leg, the right leg. You have the upper arm, the lower arm, the head. You have the gait. It just looks like a human. A humanoid. We'll measure this one real quick. Now the shadow is 27 feet tall. Does that mean the actual person is? No, we know what light does to shadow. If it's an evening time thing, the average person can cast a 27 foot long shadow if it's right at evening, right when the sun's the lowest. Is this the case here? I don't know for sure but I know what's casting this image. And it's not just a rock. It's not a penguin. I've made allegation that they might be doing some illegal whaling or something down here. Some type of processing. Guys, I've watched enough Discovery to know what an orca fin looks like. And you can even see the, the pectoral fin, the dorsal fin, the body. You can even see the white of the eye here. This is an orca in the state of being processed somehow. And my engineer guys, anybody out there in construction? Have you ever gone out to a site that hasn't been touched by any engineers or anything to construct a platform and have this appear just in nature? This is a wall, a platform, some type of constructed walkway. There is no way nature created this. The size, the dimensions, where it is. And none of this, there's evidence of fire and smoke and soot everywhere down here. And our, our researchers don't go down there and start fires. They don't. I want to show you something else. This is going to blow your mind. I think I found evidence of somebody actually writing a message. Okay. Two legs, torso, head. And if you look closely right here, you can see the letters J. And what looks like they might be making an A. I have made the allegation down here that it's China. Maybe it's Japan. Because they were at one time pretty imperialistic. And they have kind of a penchant for fish products and delicacies that are banned around the world. At least the way that they drag them out of the sea in mass.
I, I just don't know how you look at this and see anything other than a human being or some type of humanoid creature. And not very far away, remember I just mentioned soot and smoke? Guys, this is straight up people next to generators. Let's see if I can hone this in. Okay, here we go. There is some kind of device, mechanical, here, tractor, generator, something, and it's blowing smoke, soot. You've got somebody or something here next to it, and you've got another one here with another humanoid creature. These perfect squares like this, this is clearly an exhaust stack. And you can see this one is running. And I'll let you make the judge here. I mean, I don't know. That kind of looks like a glowing eye, and that kind of looks like a upper jaw. That kind of looks like a lower jaw. I mean, any thoughts? And guys, I haven't even, I'm not even halfway done, and I'm at 15 minutes. What the heck made all this nonsense on the ground? I mean, we have people, we have soot, we have... Here's a cave where you can literally see the smoke coming out of the cave. And, oh yeah, more humanoid imagery. And I'll zoom out here to show you how big this area is. And I have looked in this area, and this one, and this one. All this over here, I haven't even begun to look at yet, except for one little thing right here, and I don't even know what this is, or why I looked at it, but... Oh, I know why I looked at it. It looks like one of those Teltac craft. Here's the nose, here's the wings... You know, at this point, the idea that there isn't anything down there is almost laughable. Because I could pare down my top 50 or 100 finds to the top 20. And the top 20 alone should, in a perfect world, make people stand up and do something. Meaning reinvestigate or start an investigation into the fifth largest continent on the planet, larger than Europe. And what is going on down here? Because this isn't some little operation. Here's something that should uh, get your attention. Wind, ice, rock, and snow, huh? Why is it green? See, what we're looking at here is a terrace where somebody is growing something. That looks just like grass. And I'm going to have to go back through and watch this video before I upload it to see what I actually showed because I've just kind of gone haphazard here. Because the findings just, they just never stop. Here we have what looks like, of course, a person. And the large head of what looks like, yeah, I'm going to say it, a dragon. I mean, I don't, what else? I mean, seriously, it's, I mean, you can see the nose, the opening in the mouth, you can see where the eye is, you can see the shape of it. And I had mentioned about creating art. 
it looks like here someone has started to create some type of an image of a dragon's head where you can see the nose, the open mouth, the jaw, and the eye. But as you can see from the eye back, they haven't completed it. And I guess we're getting almost up to 20 minutes here. Any ideas about this creature? And everything we've looked at, these all these finds are all brand new. Usually I'll go back over one or two that maybe someone hadn't seen from before, but not today. And we'll do one more. Let's see. Let's get the right ear. Oh, we did this one. I know what we'll do. I wanted to share something about this third phase of the moon face. I'm sorry, third phase of moon the face that they had discovered. There is a second face in the first face. This one, of course, the mouth, the nose, the eye, the eyebrow. But if you come up here and you zoom in like this, now you see eye, eye, nose here, mouth, lower jaw, upper jaw kind of the demon within sort of thing which proves the case that this was created and this is kind of strange because in earlier years this doesn't show up this little anomaly down here under the nose it's only in this one one year that that uh that hiccup shows up but Anyway, 20 minutes. I will leave it there. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time. You may want to stop whatever it is you're doing and sit down, perhaps with a few friends, and watch this video about Antarctica. The evidence we're going to show today is going to change everything. For the last three or four years, all across this continent, we have uncovered a great many things that prove it's more than just penguins, seals, wind ice, rock, and snow. Earlier today, over at the Florida Maquis Alpha site, we dropped a video showing four examples of alien elongated skulls just sitting on the surface. I've made the allegation that perhaps this idea of climate change might have a silver lining to it. Something nobody expected. We're going to start to see things that are going to make them rewrite the history books. Now, the Florida Maquis Alpha site is just the backup site for this main channel. And over the last week, we have been republishing some things that we have found. But today, I'm going to show you a brand new find. Something that came to me from another viewer, believe it or not, of both channels. It might be the greatest single find ever submitted by a viewer to the Florida Maquis. Now, the name of the video that we put up earlier is Giant Alien Skulls Have Now Been Discovered in Antarctica, Undeniable Evidence We Are Not Alone. And these images are very clear, and these are only four. These are just the four clearest and best ones. There are many, many more. But I'd like to give credit where credit is due. Nevada Geologist, 42 subscribers, only two videos here on YouTube, gave me a set of coordinates that said, I think this is a foot, but I can't be sure. Can you look at this? And I thought, well, a couple of years ago, I found a giant footprint in Antarctica, and it was met with a great deal of skepticism. But when I looked at his evidence, it was mind-blowing. And it does go to another question. Many say, Florida Maquis, even if we accept that these four images are in fact skulls, 
where are the rest of the body? Where are the, where are the ribs? Where are the arms? Where are the legs? It's a continent the size of Europe. If you're finding all of these things scattered across the surface, shouldn't there be other parts of the body? And that's an excellent question. That's absolutely an excellent, excellent question. Now, something that goes on in Antarctica and at the polar regions that doesn't occur anywhere else other than in the deep oceans is something called polar gigantism. This, for example, on the left here is a normal pill bug, a little roly-poly like everybody knew growing up. This is the exact same animal in Antarctica. Now, I'll zoom out here a little bit so you can see the guy's hand, how much bigger a roly-poly pill bug is in Antarctica than it is anywhere else. This is also a sea spider. On the left, as you can see, you can hold it in the palm of your hand. Over here, the guy has to have a giant hot tub, and even the thing barely fits in that. And we, of course, know the story of the Patagonian giants. Now, we're not going to waste a whole bunch of time going through all of this, but this is a story of a Patagonian cannibal over 12 feet tall. This is the area of South America that's closest to Antarctica. There's been skulls and bones dug up all over. And many have said, well, some might be fake. This might be Photoshop. This particular guy is standing next to a footprint, a very clear footprint, that is looks like about five feet tall. This guy's standing next to one that looks like it's about 20 feet. Now, the standard um, ratio of foot to height is six to one. So if we assume this to be 20 feet, this would correlate to a giant of over 100 feet. Now, what did we find in Antarctica? I know a lot of you have been waiting. We just had to get all that out of the way. A long time ago, I was searching right around the 6 o'clock region of Antarctica. And I came across what looked like a giant four-toed footprint. And some said, Florida Maki, yeah, I don't know. That looks like kind of a shadow, but you had the heel shape to it. You have a toe here, another one here, and it looks like whatever it is, is, is four-toed. One, two, three, four-toed. And we're going to go ahead and measure this again. We're going to pull up the ruler function on Google Earth Pro and set the line, of course, to feet, and then we'll measure. Roughly about 54, 55 feet across from heel to toe, and width-wise, about 25 and a half feet. Now, this is not the find that G Nevada geologists submitted. Nevada geologists submitted a foot, an actual foot, laying on the ice in Antarctica. And I'm like, well, I need to see this. This is no way. And so... He gave me the coordinates, and I could not believe the coordinates. You ready for this? Less than six miles away. Less than six miles away. Now, hang on to your whatever, folks. This is going to blow your mind. Laying on the ice here, and it looks like this is what we have here is a body starting to uncover. Right here, we can see the lower half of a leg, a shin, and you can see this looks like it's a left leg. Like here would be the big toe, but one, two, three, four toes. So here we have less than six miles away a foot, a shin, and a lower leg area here setting pristine, being uncovered by the melt from climate change. Now, here's the mind-blowing part. You ready for this? What's the chances six miles away, less than actually, it's about 5.8 miles away, that there would be a foot and a footprint that would measure the exact same size? If it's all just pareidolia and apophenia and you're just seeing things in the shadows that aren't there. Let's go ahead and measure. You ready?
This is about 42, 42 and a half feet long. Now, some might say, well, the other one was 50 something feet long. Well, that's the print. Running downhill, running uphill. As you can see with the print, it was there were some elongated striations from the toes, but that's what you would have in ice and snow. It wouldn't be perfect. But that they're this close in size, it's very hard to measure because of the angle of the camera. But this is smoking gun to me. This is more than just skulls and dragons and caves and unexplained imagery that looks like settlements. This could be an actual body of a giant uncovering in the ice. As you can see, there's a large dark spot here. I don't know whether this was a burial site or whether this was where the person, the individual just perished. But there is almost, and I didn't know if I wanted to bring it up or not, very close to it, almost a hint of a skull coming through the ice. We have an eyeball here, an eyeball here, a nasal cavity here. We have the brow ridge. Let's go look at that footprint one more time. And like I said, it's not on the other side of the continent. It's literally only a few miles away. For a creature this size, walking distance, piece of cake. The shape is undeniable. The print could have had issues with the warming and the melting and the and the free refreezing and that could be why the print itself might be a little bit larger than what the foot is or maybe this particular individual had some type of a foot protection over his heel and that's why this area is much larger some type of a boot and that's why we we could still see the toes one of the things and the reason I brought up the Patagonian giants is that the giants that were described in South America, very close to Antarctica, were not known for wearing very much. Usually they weren't wearing anything at all. They might have some type of a cloak, but many of the descriptions of the giants were that they were completely without anything on their feet or anywhere else. So that would make sense. Now this would be a huge, huge giant. But I just cannot, there's another place in Antarctica, it's a, on the other side of the continent, and we've covered this for quite some time. I don't know if you've seen it yet or not, but let's see if we can pick it up in the right, uh, right ear. Sometimes it's, this imagery gets buried in the layers, and it's very difficult to see sometimes. Meaning that something appears one year and then it gets covered up with snow and you don't see it in the next year. But when you look very, very closely here, you can see the head, the skull, you can see the, the shoulder, shoulder bone, the scapula. Then here's the body, here's the hips, and then the legs, you can see the feet, the legs are crossed. Here's the, uh, this would be his left leg here, crossing under his right. So his left foot's here, his right foot's here. And then right by it, another giant skull, a giant elongated skull. This looks like it might be some kind of a related animal that had the same morphing of the skull for some reason. Who knows, this could actually be the skull of a dragon for all we know. But one thing's for sure, it's very distinct and different than everything else around it. But let's go back to that foot again. The fact that it only had four toes. There's been stories of giants having multiple rows of teeth and six fingers on the hand. But this is exactly what a foot would look like. 
in the cold. Has anybody ever seen um, someone who is suffering from frostbite? What happens to the flesh and the skin and how it turns this kind of pale color, almost black? But one, two, three, four toes. And we'll measure this again. we we'll do this in feet. We'll start doing it in feet. We'll start from the, the very tip here. And we'll go all the way to the back there about. It looks right where the heel meets the, the lower leg, about 44.7 feet. And the width is about 21 feet. And there could also be, this might not have been the size of the foot when the giant perished. This could be, of course, as we know, what happens to the, the human body as it decomposes, it shrinks. So that could account for the difference in the size. But you can see the separation of the toes and where the shin meets the ankle right here. And if we go back over to the footprint, and like I said, for me, this is the Nevada geologist, incredible find, by the way, incredible find. This is the smoking gun for the footprint. Four toes, four toes, five and a half miles away. And in Antarctica terms, five and a half miles is nothing. It's a continent the size of Europe. It's huge. Thousands of miles. That these two things are this close together. We'll measure this again one more time. Across. The print's about 25 feet, so a little bit bigger. And from heel to toe, about 58 feet. Smoking gun evidence. It doesn't get better than this. So once again, I want to give credit where credit is due. Nevada geologist looks, this is exactly the site on YouTube. N-E-V-A-D-A-G-E-O-L-O-G-I-S-T. All small, all one word. 42 subscribers. Excellent find. Excellent correlative find. It's just, that one's mind-blowing. I mean, I've been looking at Antarctica now for four, four and a half years, and there's stuff down there that I've seen that should take my breath away more than what it does at this point. That was a breathtaking find. An absolute stunner that it was that close. I had looked at that region, and that goes to show you, there's probably still stuff down there to be found. I had looked at that region for hours and hours and hours, and I never saw that. Never saw it. So, great eye. Absolutely fantastic job. But the evidence is down there. The evidence is going to continue to be uncovered. Every year, every summer, billions of tons of ice disappear from Antarctica. And many people react as if it's the end of the world. And it's going to cause problems. It doesn't matter who you blame. There could be a silver lining. The things we could discover, the technologies we could find, the histories that could be rewritten, it's going to be an amazing, amazing time to be alive. I wish I was younger. So it's kind of partial reason I try to take care of myself as much as I can so that I can live long enough to maybe see some of these things be brought to fruition. And if what I've contributed plays any small role in it, then it'll have been worth it. So anyway, Florida Maquis channel, thank you everyone here for liking, sharing, subscribing. Also, the Florida Maquis Alpha site, just like it sounds, Florida Maquis, M-A-Q-U-I-S, Alpha site, S-I-T-E, just like a work site, not like what you do with your eyeballs. It's our backup channel. It's where we're doing the Antarctica stuff. Would love to have you there. God bless. Like, share, subscribe. Have a great week, and we'll see you guys next time.
would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hot time, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? 